Welcome to the Leafy Podcast, helping real estate investors and entrepreneurs grow. Say hello to your hosts, Jennifer Goglorek and Brian Price, founders of Leafy Legal Services, teaching you how to protect your assets, grow your business, and manage your wealth. Let's start the show. Well, welcome everybody to Leafy Podcast. Today, you are here with me, Jennifer Gligerich, the COO and founder of Leafy Legal Services. And I am here with an incredible guest today. So Tammy and Brian won't be here, so I get to suck up all the time. And I'm like so excited about it. So the person that we have today has a really interesting journey. And I think you, I think it's it's very timely that we have him on the show right now. He's a leader, transformation expert, very innovative. He was a Harvard Business School graduate who then went on to do corporate and small business and startups and nonprofits, but in this very unique heart-centered and mindful way. Like at 40 years old, he decided to become a singer-songwriter so he could find his own voice. So you've probably heard him on TEDx Talks and other things. So I really want to welcome Charlie Hartwell to the show. So welcome, Charlie. And Charlie uh, Charlie is with Bridge Builders. So welcome, Charlie. Hi, and Jennifer. I, I can't wait to find out about your like whole thing. So uh, fill our, our audience in a little bit because, you know, we mostly talk to real estate investors and entrepreneurs but we're always looking I think you're gonna have some great ways that we can expand with the change of our time so tell me a little bit about your journey how you got to where you're at right now and what your focus is on oh wow uh, that's a big <laughs> that's a big question so a big um, question. maybe I'll just start so if, if I look at like core elements uh, of who I am it it seems that everything I've been associated with has to do with growth, innovation, authentic leadership, uh, and change. And it's just kind of how I came into the world. Um, so that's manifested itself in, you know, in different ways. Um, I've, you know, in, in the, in business, uh, I've, I've worked in like 14 different industries. Uh, some of it very traditional, some of it very non-traditional. Uh, but it always seems to have something to do with either change or helping to co-create global movements. Um, and, you know, then the space that I find that find myself in now investing in startups uh, in the space of sort of uh, mental health, consciousness and spirituality. Really, I have to credit my wife, Maureen, for getting me into that space uh, probably, you know, 14, 15 years ago. Um, and that's how I got introduced to this space. And now, you know, the group that I, that I work with, um, you know, have been focused for the last 10 years on investing in startups in that space. I think that is really just absolutely fascinating because you've had stints in Wall Street, you've done marketing, you did what I think I wrote uh, or read H.J. Hines and like Pillsbury, and now you're doing something so different. And so right now we're in this global period of chaos and what's going to happen and 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 nobody knows what's going on really and so but it's this great time for change <laughs> because <laughs> we're all forced to change everything how we go to work how we interact socially how how our children learn we are all being forced to make some major changes and we're all reevaluating like what does it mean to be a living person on this planet like what does everything mean so as someone who deals with with change when it's overwhelming and this has been overwhelming and it's getting more overwhelming for people. How do you help them handle that? What are some tips or advice you can give to people when it's a lot of change on how to harness that? You had a great quote that I want to say it's from his TEDx talk. And if you haven't uh, heard it yet, we're going to put the links like, you know, Tammy and Emmy will put all the links on for everybody, but it's uh, transforming ideas into action. And you said to being, you need to, or how was it being receptive to what shows up and using it creatively? And I was like, whoa, okay. So how can we do that now? Help us. <laughs> well, well, first just let me say that, that, that what I learned in my own life mm -hmm. uh, was that at the time of greatest suffering for me, which was about 15 years ago, uh, where I had, you know, my two role models died within a couple of years of each other. 
my, my, my business died and I'd always been successful in business. So this was a change. And then I was in a marriage that had been dead for years and I didn't really know it or wasn't able to admit it. So, so I was stubborn enough where all of that had to happen for me to kind of, you know, wake up. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just say, so, you know, so, so, so when change like that happens, you actually are in charge of how you respond to that change. That's the first thing. We're not a victim to what's happening around us in the world today, but my God, is it actually, you know, it's happening. And there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of transformation. But what I've found in talking to many different people along their personal journeys is those times uh, that are the hardest times are for many people the greatest times to you know to awaken to you know to 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 more of their purpose um, to to create change that actually might really benefit them in the long term uh, to look at patterns that no longer serve them so I think the you know the first thing is just what is your response to change uh, and and I just want to encourage people to to be in a place where you're not a victim to it. Um, so, uh, but change that's, is also constant. Yeah, that's very good advice, especially in, in times of deep change and turmoil is to try to not be a victim to it. And it's, and I can see why it's hard, especially if you're actually a victim. You know, you walk up and, you, and your the, your small business that you've poured your life into was raided and looted. And insurance is saying, you know, they're, I mean, I'm, we're hearing stories and insurance is saying that they're not going to cover that. And, and you're just sitting there going, how, how did this happen? You know, so you are a victim, but even then you don't have to just roll over. I, I was at the funeral of my, uh, my godmother and she was this incredibly wonderful, strong woman, her and her husband, they had six children. Uh, two of them came on to be judges. One is on, you know, I mean, they have like, they managed to take almost nothing and a lot of turmoil in their own life and spin it into this dynasty, right? And all of their children and their grandchildren have done very well. And so one of the grandchildren was speaking about, you know, her grandmother and it's a story I had not heard of. I'm hearing it for the first time at the funeral. And she said, so I had to call grandma up and um, I, the doctor finally told me like why I was so tired and everything. And I had MS. I didn't even know that my cousin had this. And so I'm like, what? And she's like, and so I'm sitting there. I've got the two little kids. She had two little kids, like a two-year-old and a four-year-old. And she calls her up and she goes, and the first thing my, my God said, she goes, well, you can't go to pot. You got those kids and your husband to think about. It. You're going to have to pull yourself up. <laughs> and so she said at that point, I was so overwhelmed. But she said something in how she said that was like, well, you're right. I just can't. It's not not that she didn't love me. She was just a very harsh woman, you know, who came from harsh times, but she also made a great success of herself in her life. And she said, at that moment, believe it or not, even though I cried when she told me that and she talked me out of it, that's what I needed to hear. And now I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I thought, wow, you know, like that's tough, but that kind of tough love, we can't go to pot, you know? And that really is what it is. You can't go to pot. <laughs> you can you can have your moment. Everybody needs their moment, right? Yeah, correct. You know, where you kind of you might lose it there for a little bit, and you have your moment, but then you can't go to pot. So you got to find a way to embrace whatever it is and figure out uh, how you're going to move forward. So now that you're investing in these incredible mindful uh, companies, uh, what is your, what is the project that really inspires you the most right now um, in your life? Well, I, I, I actually, I'll talk about two companies okay. uh, if I can. Um, yeah. The first is a, is a uh, company called Insight Timer. And what I love about this company is that I, I just sort of call it a platform of abundance. So, uh, you know, so 17 million people from almost every company on uh, country, country on the planet, you know, have downloaded this app, Insight Timer, where they meet about 7,500 global spiritual teachers from the most well-known to ones, you know, that you might not know, uh, to musicians, to scientists. 
And, and then, you know, from an abundance standpoint, there are 54,000 free meditations in 40 plus languages on the platform. So it's accessible to anyone without having to pay for it. And then if you want special features, uh, et cetera, then, you know, you can pay for that at $60 a year, you know, for a, for a subscription and you get, you know, you get some a- added content features, benefits. And then if you choose to do that, then 50% of that revenue goes back to teachers. So here's a platform where teachers get exposed to 500,000 people around the world every day who are on the app. Uh, it's growing organically. The business has never spent a, a dollar on marketing, but it's the largest conscious library, you know, on the planet. And, um, and I love it because there's like abundance everywhere. And as shareholders, you know, that, which, you know, which, which we've invested in the company, we're going to do just fine. Um, along with everyone else on the platform. So I love that business and I get really ignited, you know, supporting that business. So I like that an- from an investor standpoint too, because, you know, we deal with a lot of investors, real estate investors, but we're always looking at for investments in, in different ways to diversify your portfolio. But it's amazing how many things are out there that you're like, well, maybe I'm just not aligned with fixing and flipping or, or, or you know, buying holds. Maybe I want to be aligned for something else. There's something out there if you just choose to look for it. And now is the time a lot of people are searching and searching for things. So it's just fascinating. You were able to find something like that that so resonates with you on a spiritual level, but also is something that's a business as well. And it's not a drain. You're just like so joyful to talk about it. So that's really great. <laughs> so what's what's the other one? Oh, so the other one's a much earlier startup. Um, and uh, it's it's a I mean imagine the 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 joy of like investing in a company called True Love. Uh, so so True Love is a company in Toronto, uh, Ontario, run by a woman uh, who's one of the most senior female gaming programmers in the world, um, and her name is Bree Code, and she has. Um, you know, this revolutionary concept around gaming. So if you think about how we all game, uh, it's all, all the games have basically been developed by men. It's basically programmed to, you know, either fight or fight flight or the, you know, the sort of the stress response in the brain. That's how, you know, gaming has been developed. And, uh, and Brie has a very revolutionary concept around developing gaming. That's a more feminine approach. And it's more, instead of fight or flight, uh, it's about tending and befriending. And so she's the, she developed a, 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 her first AI companion is called hashtag self care. Uh, you can download it you know, for free. And, and it got 2 million downloads. A lot of it is just because there's about 50% of the population that doesn't like the way we've gamed and they don't like, you know, the, all the killing and all the response and all the stress and all the winning and domination. She is uh, yeah, building a very different platform. So I love supporting revolutions like that. I love that. You know, I, uh, there's one game I play Conan exiles and it's like set in the Conan universe and my boyfriend and I, we play it. And of course it's a lot of grinding. So you just go and you have to slaughter all these enemies, but you also build. So the idea is to, to you start out and you need to get like a, you know, you, a little thing to chop something. You need to make shelter. You're going to die in the sandstorm that has these beasts that come and try to get you. And so as you build, you build up levels, you build up more skills, and then you can craft things. So it's almost like Minecraft in, in, in certain ways of it, but then you have a bunch of other stuff that goes on with it. But I did, uh, as I'm playing, I'm thinking, wow, this is really interesting because the stuff that he loves doing, which is I want a better sword so I can kill these people more better. I'm like, I really want the chronixium uh, bricks so then I can make. So I created, he had the sandstorm shelter. And what I did is I created this massive castle and we have like all these workers and they're all specialized. (laughs) And you know, you can make all this stuff and we have these animals everywhere. I have like you know baby rhinos and And it's but it's a blast right so because he's like ah this is great you know like this is how it should be i'm gonna go out and kill all this stuff and then you just come here and you make this big old castle with all your pets and everything like that make it all pretty (laughs) so you're right you're right and at least maybe not for everybody you know no one's universal not all women think like all men think like no correct but but 
but just for just for us, that's how it played out on this one game that 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 we do that we do play. So I get it. So that is like so interesting that you've been able to to find these things and invest with them. And you also, uh, as a leader, and as a thought leader, you've been able to help these startups as far as how they're thinking to to grow them. So for anyone right now that is in, in this time, and there's a lot of new businesses being built now, as 72,000, I think I just read 72,000 small businesses have went under just in the last three months. It was an unbelievable number. And, but in within that number, they're pivoting to other things. So maybe the one business went and they're thinking of something else because entrepreneurs are going to be entrepreneurs. They're going to do their entrepreneur stuff. So what advice would you give people right now who are trying to build in this type of environment? Is there, are there any tips that you can, you, you can help them or something you can inspire them? them to I try to always harken back to times of big strife some of the wealthiest most successful people came out of these times you know so that's it but maybe they're not in it for wealth maybe they're in it for something else so um, what can you think to tell them anyone who's struggling right now to either pivot their business or uh, get a new startup yeah you know listening sort of listening to what's happening and following your passion um, and, 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 and sort of understanding, you know, what is your passion in the world and how can you provide value through that passion, uh, in, you know, in sort of a unique way, uh, that, that to me, that a lot of the entrepreneurs or, or every entrepreneur that I speak to, uh, and the ones that we invest in are people that are really connected to their own you know, to their own gifts, to their own passion, to whatever change they want to, you know, to, to make in the world. Uh, and then, you know, they really listen to the marketplace. Uh, they try to stay on top of it. Uh, they need to change, you know, they need to change as the market changes, sometimes really fast, sometimes really slowly, but to be adaptable to understanding, you know, where the, where the market needs are going, where your customers are going, what their needs are and adapting your product to that, um, isn't, you know, it's another, is another piece of advice. And, and, um, you know, I, I just, I, I just have this belief, uh, that, you know, that we're all here, we all have, you know, our own individual purposes as human beings. And if you connect to that, um, then, you know, then you can do something that really resonates with you. And that's likely then going to resonate with others. And, and the, you know, the other thing that I guess I'd say is if you're going to connect to that, then are there other people who, who do you know that you can do this with? You know, the entrepreneurship is not a single person game. I mean, you know, in, in many of our businesses, we find co-founders as opposed to single founders. And, you know, who whose skills, gifts, and talents resonate with your mission, but allows you to accomplish something together that you can't do yourself? That's really good. The idea that don't, I mean, one of the things I say is don't go it alone, you know, because we help people do their structures and get things set up and, and, you know, like don't, don't skip and don't go it alone. You don't have to. There's somebody that, that would be there willing to help you. There's a million groups out there just, just sitting there waiting, waiting to help people or give someone a little bit of advice. I think it's, it's actually harder to get through the noise to get to the right advice than it is to get to advice because there's just so much stuff out there and you just have to align to it. Um, and it's also good as find your passion. And maybe for some people, you know, they're like, I don't know what the market's doing. I don't know what's happening. I don't know how to shift. You know, like they're just in, I don't know. Well, maybe you should just figure out, well, is it still really your passion? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe that's what you need. Just lay on the beach and let the water lap around you and have your moments. Right because you can't let yourself go to pot, but mm -hmm. then try to try to figure out what it was. So we're, uh, we're almost going to be ready to go, but I want to find out the story of how you decided to learn to be a singer songwriter at 40. Like how, after all that time of like, not being mm -hmm. a singer songwriter, like what propelled you to do that, to find your voice in that way? Uh, again, you know, this was, this was this time that I was talking about, you know, the time oh. of my greatest suffering was really the time when, you know, I'm just going to describe it as, you know, waking up or um, connecting to my more authentic self. And, and within that, uh, it was, 
uh, the music kind of found me. Uh, I, I, I had been a harmonica player. I was a little bit of a guitarist. All of a sudden, songs started coming, uh, and, I, and I started singing. And then people would say, yeah, you, have, you know, you have a nice voice. And then, you know, and then when my dad died, my first album was called Courage, which was really just about my experience of going through his death. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, and then, and then the experience of going through his death, which turned out to be the greatest gift in my life, because it was really this awakening for me. So the gratitude that I had for who he was and how, you know, and how his death was this invitation. Uh, and then, you know, so I, I just say songs just started coming and I'd write them down and I, there's no, there's no way to describe it besides that. And sometimes they, you know, they'd come and I'd, I'd write a song in, you know, in 15 minutes, uh, cause wow. it's just kind of like it came from somewhere else and, uh, I didn't have to work hard at it. And then I just had to figure out, you know, how to get it, you know, recorded. Uh, and I had a friend that helped me do that and other musicians. Um, so, uh, it, you know, it was not something that I had planned. It was not something that was traditional for me. It was not something in my family system that people would value mm -hmm. per se. It was actually stepping out and just, you know, it, it, it was really a bigger process of connecting to my authentic voice and, mm -hmm. and what, um, what I wanted to do to create change in the world. So I think that's absolutely amazing, especially for a guy, because, you know, you think you, you picture someone who's going through upheaval and they would be like, I just want to sing or I want to be an artist. And you would picture that as something a girl would do. Right. They would mm -hmm. just say, I'm just going to start singing because singing makes me happy. But then to have a guy go, you know, I've had the whole business. I've run these startups. I'm from the Harvard Business School. You know, you just picture you as just putting on your suit and just being like, rah, 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 for you to go. You know what? I think I want to sing. <laughs> That's just like a tough thing. I can see how that in, in, in our culture would be like a little difficult, but it seems like you just didn't even think about it. So there were no obstacles for you because you didn't let it bother you. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean? you know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a different piece of that, which I would say, you know, and here's maybe encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm very comfortable with my masculine side, you know, mm -hmm. the, no issue, but I'm also very comfortable with my feminine side mm -hmm. and uh, as in connecting to my feminine side and not being afraid of it and not, you know, allowing others to tamp it down or whatever, mm -hmm. I find I have these remarkable gifts of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So I can use my Harvard Business School degree, but I can use these collaborative skills, which, you know, most people would describe as a more feminine skill. And I can create, and I can use both of those things together to create massive change in the world. Like mm -hmm. I'd say, you know, the, 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 there's a hundred people meditating in the world today based on the platforms that we invested in. And that was all because of, you know, because of my partner's collaboration skills and my collaboration skills uh, to support these companies. So, so I just want to say like our society has really made men wrong for having a feminine side. And I just want to say it's a strength for me. And I encourage, you know, people who are uncomfortable with that to, you know, to shift their thinking around that. I love that. I love the idea because I think society has made men feel for having feel bad for having a masculine side too. I think at this point it's like they're wrong for everything. You know, <laughs> I just I just feel really bad. But maybe it's because I'm a parent of a boy, right? So I am much more hypersensitive to these sort of little little notices they get of it's not okay to be you. And I just want to like say, yeah, it's completely okay to be you. You just go be you as big as you can be you. And I love the fact that you did that. You were like, I'm just going to be me as big as I'm going to be me. It's all going to work out. Now there's a hundred people meditating right now as we speak because of me being me. And I love the way you stated that because it's so positive and it is a unique way to just look at something. And if we can all do that with ourselves, we can see the value we've brought into the planet. Because somebody, you know, you can have a pizza shop. You know, right now someone's not hungry because of me. They're eating yummy, healthy food that I made in my pizza shop. And I use organic dough or whatever, you know. Whatever just, that is, yeah. That's whatever great... it is, and it's great. And you're yeah. wonderful. And, you know, God, uh, God bless you. So, anyway, we're at the end of the show. And I just want to thank you, Charlie. We're with Charlie Hartwell, by the way. We've been speaking to him. He's got a really great... TEDx talk transforming ideas into action we're going to have the link you'll be able to see it right under this 
He's also with Bridge Builders, so bbcollaborative.com. You can find out a lot more about him and all these wonderful things. There's many companies on there. I, uh, he's got like a, a company where you put a headband on your head and it can help you train your mind to, to, to do all sorts of incredible things to live healthier and better and then the uh, meditation app so like please go and uh, do something a little bit different I know we didn't talk about ROI and cap rates today and all that but this is also important too because we need these things to be whole human beings and to be mindful for our whole life so just thank you Charlie thank you very much for being on the show and Thanks, again. Jennifer. I appreciate you having me. It was a good, oh, good yeah. fun conversation. Yeah, it has been a fun conversation. So everybody, you can find us at Leafy uh, Legal anywhere on social media. And Leafy Podcast is being broadcast um, everywhere that podcasts are played. iTunes, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Radio FM, uh, WDJ uh, FM. Uh, yeah. FM in Atlanta. Y'all are listening to us probably on a drive time show right now. We love you guys. And uh, thank you again for stopping big. Bye. And I uh, hope you'll have a great week. Thanks. Bye bye, guys. Attention real estate investors and entrepreneurs. Did you know that real estate investors are a primary target for lawsuits? According to the National Survey of the Court data, 25% of Americans risk being sued in their lifetime. However, if you are a real estate investor, you have a 95% chance of being sued in the next 20 years. Leafy Legal Services helps you protect your assets and strategically grow your business and wealth. Leafy Legal Services are experts at the Series LLC and Delaware Statutory Trust. Trust, two of the newest and most ideal legal structures for real estate investors. Leafy Legal Services have the most personalized and affordable solutions for setting up LLCs. Property owners are always at risk when it comes to their assets. Anonymity is so important. If you own just a rental house and you own your home, you have to protect yourself and your properties from any potential legal issues. Leafy Legal Services have the right solutions to make sure you are happy and feel secure. They offer cost-effective documentation that suits their clients' needs. For a free consultation and ebook, visit leafylegalservices.com. They are waiting to hear from you. Leafylegalservices.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't wait. Take action now. Leafylegalservices.com. Protect your assets, grow your business, and manage your wealth.